All right, and we're back with Thomas once again. Mm. Do some homebrew tips. Yes, I am i don't know what I'm like, but I never go away. <laughs> I don't know what that means. No, it's, it's like a, ooh, you know what I'm like? I'm like that bit of medicine that you like taking as a kid. Like that medicine you pour into one of those, uh, like, the little, little shoots. The little measured... Yeah, yeah, they kind of, they, they were like your first introduction to like a beer bong, except <laughs> that it was medicinal, it tastes like <laughs> fucking garbage. No, 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 it tastes like cherries. No, it doesn't. No. I think maybe that's why I don't like fruit now. <laughs> I was permanently scarred by 80s medicine. Fake cherry flavor, that's rough. If you're lucky, you got the fake grape. I love that grape freight. Grape diamond tap. I just drink that all day. Oh, what flavor? DM? <laughs> Preferably. Oh, let's hope so. Uh, anyway, today we're going to be talking about Dimatap. <laughs> <laughs> I would love for a tasting of Dimataps. <laughs> What's all this Dimatap here for? Well, we were doing a tasting to see how Research. many we could do before we could pass, before we passed out. This is like a chloroform challenge. It's the worst idea ever. <laughs> oh, that's good. What are we actually tasting? Well, I'm drinking this delicious Belgian triple. I love the glasses we're drinking out of too. They're Dubel glasses, so they are would generously be described as cups. I would term them as goblets. Yeah. How much beer do you think this glass holds, though? Ooh. I mean, did you finish that entire bottle? In yeah. These two glasses? Yeah, there's plenty of room. <laughs> these have to be 18, 19 ounce glasses, probably. Yeah, easy. Maybe more. Hey. I mean, I like it. Triples are, there's a lot of head to those beers. Like, they were popping out the top, but. They're popping tops. And when when you are drilling with a with a tripel, which is generally, what, 8 to 10% alcohol? Yeah, right around there. You want a lot of it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and all at once, too. Definitely don't split that up. Two people right down the middle, like 12 and a half ounces a piece. Just let her rip. Yeah. And well, uh, yeah, we'll do it. Thankfully, we have two 750s of West Mall Triple. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it's a full 750 a piece. Yeah. Because why not? Just being thorough. When in Rome, drink all the Belgian beer. Got it. Um, yeah, it's a definitely a a change from the previous style, the English porter. <laughs> uh, it's more interesting, I'll tell you that. It's got a lot going on. I love it. It shocked me to that you said we're drinking the West Mall. You've never had the West yeah, Mall. Yeah, I never had the West Mall. I I say when I if I do a triple, I would usually just do the the La Fin de Monde. That is, well, don't get me wrong. I love the La Fin de Monde, and it is very, it is a Belgian beer. Made in yeah. Canada, yeah. but it is, it's more affordable. Yeah, it's, it's normally more it, fresh. Yeah, exactly. It's um, more accessible. People know it, so they drink it. And it, the yeast strain they use is amazing. It's just great. Like, they made that, do they make that in cans? Uh, no, I don't think you, I, I've not ever, I've never seen any Unibrew cans. Okay. I always thought that'd be an interesting thing to have in cans. Not because I want to take it on a float trip or anything, but I always thought that'd be an interesting, like, their artwork on a can. It's oh, a yeah. little bit more approachable serving. Like, I don't need it to be larger than 12 ounce, but I certainly don't need a 750. Yeah. But, uh, uh, that reminds me, um, you know what I've seen that's in cans now that's awesome yeah. and completely unnecessary? Schlinkerla Urbach. Fucking Rauk beer. <laughs> is it of like. Of course! It's in like 16 ounce cans. I'm like, what is it? What is that for? Because on a hot summer day, you know what I want? A goddamn smoked beer. Dude, that beer tastes like bacon. It's a great beer. I, I love that beer. I like smoky beers. I could never get on board with it. But why would I need that in a can? <sighs> you know what our problem was? Uh, the beer tastes like a campfire? No. The beer's too expensive? No. We haven't gotten the beer to enough people? No. <laughs> it's a packaging problem. <laughs> yeah. People just don't like the glass. They just don't like those yeah. bottles. I don't think that's that. I don't think that's the problem. Nope, it's absolutely the problem. Yeah, you can get uh, Urbach in four packs, sixteen ounce. Great. I don't next know. Thing, next thing you're telling me is I can get a four pack, sixteen ounce of Jahunda beer. <laughs> it's coming soon. Yeah, because the people goddamn demanded it. <laughs> well, but anyway, I'm yeah. surprised. You can get your alcohol here for 16. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, it's probably not even 16, is it? It's probably yeah, no. 500 mil. Oh, yeah, it probably is 500 mil. It's 14.9 because fuck you, Europe. <laughs> yeah, it's the weirdest thing. Like, I saw that in, you know, Major Brands catalog thing. I'm like, who the fuck wants this? 
Like you work at one of the one of the businesses that's like orders the most if anybody weirdest stuff. If anybody had it, it would be my store, and there's no fucking way no. I would ever bring that in. It, like that's that's the, they go through two cases a year at Lucas. It's like where by definition they carry everything, and I don't even yeah. know if that's a they can do that anymore. But uh, that's stupid. But yeah, that being said, I want to go buy one. <laughs> they. They beat Unibrew to the game, though. Like, Unibrew cans would be great. Oh, would be fantastic. I'd only need, like, I'd probably buy that, like, three or four times a year. But hell, with those beers, you could have them on the shelf that long. Yeah, they're good for forever. The dates on those beers are amazing. <laughs> but this one, the West Mall, I, I I can see you having the Double because that's one, there's not a whole lot of Doubles out there. Yeah, I've definitely had that one. For me, this is the, when I think of a Trapel, it's this one. And rightfully so, because that's like this is the one that all others are based off of, pretty much. And it's it's not cheap, which is why I don't buy it often. Yeah, I used to buy the tall grass. Uh, oh, the velvet rooster. rooster. Not anymore. Not anymore. I was like, it's such a deal because it was. Yeah, that's probably why it's not available anymore. But well, and like New Belgium makes that triple. Yeah, that one's but okay. I just don't really give a shit about New Belgium by and large. And here's the thing. It could have been improved over the years. Like it could be a great Chappelle. I'd be like, yeah, but they make Fat Tire. And again, there's nothing wrong with <laughs> Fat Tire. I don't know why. Honestly, I think this is what it is. I think I don't like New Belgium purely because they had red and purple labels on the point. Oh, yeah. And I, and I don't know why, but I'm scarred. But this is, this is my... It may have been a place that I worked uh, briefly, bar, ba- bar backing bartending. They had these kind of like, they had Rochefort, they had West Mall, yeah. uh, Orville, Duval, uh, all those Belgians like there. All those Trappist beers. It, they, all the Trappists that you could get, all on one shelf. And I would nice. drink that a lot and drink, I would drink Trappel from West Mall and I'd smoke like a, a small cigar. Yeah. It was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm looking to die by the age of 44. <laughs> um, but this is a uh, this is my favorite. This is my go-to. I don't buy it as often as I should. Probably it's hard to it's hard to repeat beers anymore. You know. Yeah. Is yeah. there is there a beer you could drink every day for a year? Um, I mean, like we talked about Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, man. It's hard to it's hard to beat. It's hard to beat. I can do that or like a, a Dale's Pale. Yeah. I could drink something Dale's. like that. Yeah, it'd probably be a Pale Ale just because it's such a. I can do like Avery White Rascal for a year. Oh yeah. Those are good. I, I like that. That'd be, uh, that'd be a little tougher, though. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't want to drink like Budweiser for a year. No, I, I don't know why. I'd get over that real fast. I, I used to. Drink a cider I used to say that like Great Divide Claymore was my favorite beer. I had a Claymore a couple months ago, and I was like, this beer is kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I like the. Well, I did like the Claymore. Do I have yeah. to revisit all the beers that I thought I liked? That's what sucks. I think you do because oh, no. they're totally different now. <laughs> oh no! Or your your palate is totally different now. Unfortunately, peeling back the onion, man. This is awful. Yeah, that is another reason why I don't like to revisit movies that I used to love yeah. as a teenager. Uh, I guess I should talk about homebrewing. Have you ever made a triple uh, on purpose? <laughs> Or otherwise, yes, uh, I have. I have attempted a triple on yep. purpose, uh, and I have hit it. It was a little high. It's like eleven and a half. Got a nice, little, got a little up there. It's just short of a quad. Was it? Was it smooth though? Like was it well hidden alcohol? Like that's an important thing. There in was triple. there was a there was a little bit of warmth on the end. Yeah, a little hum, but it wasn't yeah. aggressive. That one went pretty well. Yeah. And I learned a couple lessons there. I think I made that same beer again. I think it was, I think I called it something Best Stone. I used the Best Stone yeast, which I think may have come from Unibrew. I don't know. I, there was a certain yeast in the, the, the system that was, it was labeled as Best Stone yeast. Yeah. And I used that. And the first time it came out like 11 and a half. Next time it came out about nine and a half. And it was really, really good. good. And then I tried again to make a, a Belgian single. And it fermented. And then it was a Belgian double. Then it fermented some more. That was a triple. All right, cool. Then it fermented still. <laughs> it was like 14 and a half percent. It was basically rocket fuel. Yeah. It was a quad ish. <laughs> so I guess the two things are that I have to say is trapels are not a particularly difficult thing to brew. And if you're looking to brew a trapel, try a Belgian single. And if you mess up your calculations, it can become a triple. I don't recommend going for a triple on the high end. Because then you're end up yeah. in a quad or a quintuple. quintuple. I would suggest going if you're going to brew. If you're going to brew a triple, aim on your malt bill, aim low in case it ferments out dry. 
and then you have some wiggle room on the end. Or you can make a single, yeah. and it becomes a double or a triple, and you just call it a tripel style. Yeah. Right? Uh, as far as from a technical brewing standpoint, that's unlike the design of the brew. Technically, you need next to no hops. So it's kind of a, from an actual brew day perspective, it's very boring. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, there's some bitterness to a yeah. triple, but I think a lot of it is from, like, the... It's, it's all yeast. From the yeast, right? And it's really highly attenuated, yeah. so it's going to be, like, dry. You have next to no hops. You get a little bit of bitterness, but you're really looking at, like, 20 IBUs, maybe 30 to yeah. stand up to the alcohol, something like that. Okay, you got that. You're not... The malt bill, while there's a lot of malt, it's not interesting. There's not a lot of dark malts. You got your base malt, and then you got your stuff for color. Yeah, it's pretty much you, like... And a, then you need some breadiness. It's pretty much like a Pilsner malt, right? Yeah. Like something pretty... You have a Pilsner malt as a base, and then you have some, like, some some other malts, like a, like a biscuit malt or, like, a, a Vienna or Victoria, something like that, to give it a little bit of color and body. Yeah. You're not adding a whole lot of flake. You're not adding rice hulls to keep it separated. It's a pretty clean thing. There's not a lot of darkness to it. It's pretty standard malt bill. So all of the stuff comes from two things. You can treat your water, but that's more of an advanced brewing thing. Yeah. Make it more like the Belgian water, which I think is a little bit higher in pH. It's really nitpicky. Yeah. But it comes from the yeast. And the important thing on the yeast is to get a yeast starter, get a good yeast that's fresh, build a yeast starter, and have enough yeast to finish through all that malt. The double-edged sword part is you have too much yeast <laughs> you overshoot and you end up with that quintuple. Yeah. But a good healthy strain, prop it up, have the proper starter, and to do that you need to run through a calculator, and those are available online for free. It's not a difficult beer to do. It's not even a difficult beer to do and it's drinkable. It is an extremely difficult beer to do very, very well. Yeah. Because you need the yeasts to be a certain way. I think that's why a lot of breweries take a certain strain of yeast. It's to the home brewer, it's fairly commercial and homogenous, and you'll have some notes. But breweries may take that and use batch after batch, and it mutates out to a profile they like, like a like a sourdough yeast starter. They keep the starter and they brew off of that. Yeah. Um, so that's where kind of the nuance comes in. There's a term for that. I can't remember what they call it. Who knows? Oh, it's helpful. It's uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use a word that's not it, but it sounds funny. Uh, deciduous. It's like a tree. It's fine. Yeah. But this specific yeast, the Westwall yeast, that is available through White Labs. It's right one up. of their yeast strains, and you can find all that. But that's everything I know about brewing tripels. When in doubt, brew it, ferment it, and if it doesn't, it isn't what you want, call it whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> and no one will know the difference. I have a cider downstairs right now. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a cider. It might be seven percent. It might be twenty percent. I don't know. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the Russian roulette of uh, of hunger. So is that about it for triples? <laughs> tripel. How do you it? triple or tripel? I'm a tripel. Yeah, I used to say tripel, but everybody always says triple, and I got I got peer pressure into saying triple. Well, it, uh, like double. Well, I always well, say double. What does it say on the end of the? Does it say el on the bottle? It says el. Tripel. Right. Yeah. I'm not a heathen. I read the words. <laughs> that new well, Belgian, I am a heathen. But... That new Belgian one says triple, but it's got two P's. I'm like, what is that now? Maybe that's why I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's flaunting its needlessness. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of an asshole. So. <laughs> I'm mostly an asshole. I'm completely an asshole. Yeah, I like I like triple. It sounds better, but... Now, now having this, would you recommend having this over the Le Finumont? I absolutely would, yeah. I mean, even with the price difference. I mean, this was a seven fifty bottle. It was like eleven bucks. Like, it's not. It's what eight ninety nine or nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's like nine like, or something for a Le Fin de Mons. It's like, a little bit more affordable. I don't think Le Fin de Mons is strong. Nah, they're, no, they're close. It, I it's mean, maybe a percent. Lower. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think Le Fin de Mons eight. And this is nine. This has a lot more bitterness than a Le Fin de Mons. A Le Fin de Mons is not very bitter at all. I like that this isn't as carb as Le Finimon. It's a you little less so. I don't it's think it's pretty carby. I don't think so. I maybe the carb got knocked down, but I always thought yeah. of this is a little less carb than Le Finimon. I remember that being super bubbly. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. This has a little bit more depth. It's not a it's silkier, I guess. I don't know. Not as maybe that's the carbonation of it. I love both the beers. You really can't go wrong with either. Yeah. But 
I this is my kind of go-to for for a uh, Trapel. So the the Duble's good, but this is the flagship to me. And yeah, I had the the Duble when I was studying for my Cicerone test because wow. there there are lots of either ors, and one of them was like it was it didn't make any sense. It was like a is it a Belgian Duble or is it like a, a I don't think it was an English porter, but something like that, like some kind of like British beer. I'm like, well, that's gonna be easy as fuck. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's that's not exactly you know the it's not exactly an enigma there. Yeah, I really I really do like this beer. But I say if you do get it, go to a, a place that would probably cycle through it at least more often than others. Yeah, I wouldn't want to buy this at a grocery store. I would say these. Two, I don't know if you could buy this at a grocery store. If you saw you it, could, you I could, wouldn't buy it. You could probably get a Le Fin du Monde at a grocery store. Sure. The thing is, though, like, with Le Fin du Monde and with the Westmall Triple, they have very easy-to-read, born-on, best-by dates. Weirdly so, yeah. Yeah. Versus whatever the hell we read on those English bottles. That yeah, English, that's, that's same just gibberish. Um, it, it, had, it had three letters and three digits. <laughs> None of them made sense. I think maybe that the letters... A, like they corresponded to months, so like A equals January, B equals February. Yeah, usually I think that's the case if it has just like one letter at the beginning. But I didn't have my code wheel with me, so I couldn't <laughs> pick a, figure it out. Uh, you didn't have your fucking, what's that thing from, uh, never mind. A cryptics? Yes, cryptics. Yeah. <laughs> I love that that's all it took for you to know what I was trying to <laughs> well, say. Well, you're, that's a certain f- <laughs> I can't believe you say this. It's a certain fingering motion that I, uh, <laughs> yeah. that is, all, all you had to do is a little bit of the thumbs. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, the, the cryptics, the Da Vinci Code. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, because like Chimay, Chimay White, I don't think those have dates. St. Bernard's Triple, that shit doesn't have a date. No. I know. Carmelite, no. Carmelite, I don't think so. Those are when you look at the bottom. Ooh, pro tip for Belgian <laughs> beers. Yeah. When you look at a Belgian beer, look at it on the shelf, hold it to the light, and give it just a tiniest of swirls and look at the yeah. bottom and see the yeast sediment. Yeah. If you see like a, a fine sand sediment, you're fine. If it's chunky... If it's chunky, yeah, it's been there for a while. Don't buy it. Which which is a, which is a sad thing, because these beers and the other Trappists are amazing. Yeah. If you get them proper, they're amazing. I don't know that I've ever gotten a good Orval. Oh, well, Orval's got a little bit of bread in it, so it's got a little bit of that, just a tinge of funk to it. Yeah. Even then, like, half the times I've opened a bottle of that, it just explodes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's got some bread in it, yes. so. <laughs> I, I think, I think, Le Finemon, West Mall, Rocheford. Yeah. Duval. Chimay White's good. I mean, Chimay White Chimay gets, is good. Those like, get pretty, those get pretty good. But yeah. even the Orville, the Golden Drock, the... Golden Drock's like a, technically I think it's like a Belgian Dark Strong. It's like a quad. True. But I'm just saying, in terms of freshness, those get oh, a little yeah, bit, yeah. Little get, uh, squirrely. Yeah. Caramely... The other ones, so it's yeah. Tricky. yeah, you got to go to a specialty shop to get a good triple, yeah. Triple. But uh, worth worth seeking out, I think. Oh yeah, and if you can find one, uh, Westmall doesn't do it, but like if you want a Duval, which is a single golden, yeah. they sometimes sell the, the big bottles. Oh yeah, or the uh, Le Chouf. I've always liked Le Chouf. I don't know. Why. I do like Le Chouf. Yeah, they're uh, those are good at Christmas. The big bottles. Yeah, it's you know because people like people are really neglecting imported beers. Yeah. Which I get because it's hard to get fresh like that English porter. It's impossible to find a fresh one. Yeah. Pretty much. But like Belgian beers have some legs. Like they'll last a long time and they're definitely worth checking out. You know, like right. it's hard to find a good Grolsch because they're in fucking green bottles. You're assuming there is such a thing. <laughs> a good a good Grolsch might as well be saying like a nuanced Foster. <laughs> like maybe... But no. But probably not. But like, Belgian beers are totally worth checking out. Belgians are great. Just all around. Yeah. I, I Even even the, f I won't say faux Belgians, but the Belgian, American breweries that do Belgian styles, the more popular ones. So your, your brother Thelonious, or your, yeah. well, at least mentioned Le Finemon in Canada, but some of the weird ones like Lucifer, like you see <laughs> that on shelf, like, <laughs> there's, yeah. I think there's still a couple of Lucifer's floating around. That'd be that'd be like a beer I'd open up and I expect. They that put that beer. they put that in cans too. Of course, <laughs> why not? Dubac, uh, Dubac White Ale is in cans. 
not the Saison though. That Dubois Saison. Have you ever had the Dubois Saison? Mm-hmm. It's fucking killer, and it's like seven bucks for a seven fifty, and they're not gonna make it anymore, or not distribute it anymore. The, the Lucifer can. That's the kind of can I open up and I expect like a cartoon ghost to fly out. <laughs> Monk's Cafe. You can get that in cans. <laughs> Why? I don't know. You know. What's what's that? Spandergenst. I hope so. <laughs> Let me get a 16 ounce of the sour shit you got. <laughs> well, this is 14 bucks a can, and it's super sour. Cool. How much is the four pack? $42. <laughs> you know what? The last time I had a Vandergenst was at your other place, your old apartment, and it was after we drank the brewery ruse. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, that Vandergenst was just like malty. This is the maltiest <laughs> motherfucker you'll ever drink. It wasn't sour at all. Oh, I forgot <laughs> about that. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, that's true. If you drink an that extra sour is, beer... That Ruse is sour. Yeah, that one, the stone's good. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you have any other homebrewing tips for a triple? Oh, overall? Don't do homebrewing. No. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, I, I don't really. Um, the only other thing I'll say is with these beers that have a high elk and these yeasts, sometimes they're a little lethargic. So give them enough time in primary, move them to secondary... And give them less time in secondary clear. Oh, because the worst thing you can do is push it too quickly, and then you end up with a yeasty, not really great thing. Yeah. So for these especially, I, I do primary fermentation for like say two weeks, rack it off into a secondary bucket, and let that go for another two or three weeks. This is not a short turn around beer. Yeah. You can do a Centennial Blonde in like a couple weeks. This would be more like, hey, this would be like a two month fermentation cycle. Yeah. So, Worth it though. So worth it. Do you uh, do the Belgian candy sugar like in the bottle? Uh, not in the bottle. No. I, I use that in the boil. Oh, really? I don't know how that works. Just, that's just to like the boost ca- alcohol. Yeah, that's a mainly an alcohol boost thing, but it does add a little bit of flavoring if you do it in the uh, the boil. That's actually a good point. Bel- white Belgian candy sugar for a tripel. When you do it into a bottle, I've always done where I carve it in a keg and rack it off into bottles if I want to do it that way that's a little more advanced yeah if you're carving in the bottle and bottling conditioning you have a little less control over your carbonation sure so you can end up with bottle bombs or very very foamy uh, beers or a geyser yeah that's what you have to worry about because the Belgian yeasts are virile yeah so well I know that, that, that like traditionally they will bottle triples and they'll condition Bottle condition for sure. That's why they have those thick ass glass bottles and they cork and cage the shit yeah. so it's not gonna These are like explode clue master detective murder weapon bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These they're they're thick. They're yeah. thick bastards. For sure. But uh yeah, I guess that's a good point too. Like you would wanna it would addition to your malt bill, you use the candy sugar, but also when you're bottling, just that's why you let it fully ferment out. So it's done. So if you yeah. do bottle and add more sugar and you condition it, you don't have a landmine on your hand. Yeah. So I've never seen a homebrew in a cork and cage. So mm. no, you haven't. By the way, and when that happens, it's a very unique sound when something yeah. explodes. So it's like a gunshot. Yeah, but it's more. It's deeper. I'm just thinking of Breaking Bad. Yes. Where Hank does his Schrader brow. And his Schrader brow. That's and right. He explodes in the garage. I forgot he had that. He thinks that Douchey Schrader brow. He thinks the cartel is coming to get him. Ah, that's cool. <laughs> nah, honestly.